All right, how's it going, y'all? So today is Amazon Prime Day, today and tomorrow. And I'm gonna go over a bunch of deals that are actually useful if you're looking at the NAS and networking space. I've never actually made one of these videos before, even though I've been in the kind of YouTube space for a while now, because quite frankly, they've never had that good of deals. I feel like Amazon Prime Day has never been that good of a deal if you're looking for specific products, especially when it comes to networking gear and really servers and things like that, they tend not to be that good. And so because of that, I've really not made videos on it because I didn't see anything that was really worth going out for. But for whatever reason, this year is actually really solid. And I think part of that reason is the abundance of cheaper networking gear that has actually made this space a lot better. And there's actually competition again. And so this video is going to go over a few actually pretty solid deals for NAS and storage setups. And we're also going to talk about what to and what not to buy on Amazon Prime Day, because some of it is not discounted at all, especially the name brand stuff. As always, everything I'm going to talk about here has an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below. It really helps out the channel, but nothing here is going to be sponsored at all. It is just things that I found myself and well, I actually think are a pretty useful deal. So right off the bat, I want to get a disclaimer here. If you're looking for Synology NAS, there are none on Prime Day. If you search for it, nothing comes up. There are no Synologies that are actually saving. You can get some RAM and that is really it. Because honestly, Synologies themselves do not go on sale that often, but the most expensive part of the NAS is on sale and that is your hard drives. So for the very first Prime Day sale, Seagate Iron Wolves are actually on sale and not just the small ones, but the large ones. So the 16 TB drives are genuinely on sale down to 250. I will say the 315 number is a bit high. Realistically, I expect a good deal on a 16 terabyte drive to be about 300 US dollars. And it has been a while since they've come down to 250. So genuinely, these are good deals and they've got the deals for both the 16s and the 12 TB drives. The 12 DBs are not the pros. I've not seen much difference between the Iron Wolves and the Iron Wolf Pros other than the warranty. So I never really seek out the pros versus the not one way or the other, just because I've not seen a huge difference between the two. But these are two actually really solid deals on drives because this is by far the most expensive part of your NAS, especially if we're talking about a four or five bay NAS. Filling it up with drives ends up being way larger than the cost of the NAS itself. And buying them on sale is actually pretty rare. Hard drive prices have been increasing and actually getting these for this price is a pretty solid deal. So this is probably one of the best deals I've seen out there. I love the Seagate Iron Wolves. It's personally what I run. It's what I buy with my own money. I like them a lot. So right now I think 16 terabytes is right at the best bang for your buck in terms of storage per dollar. So the most terabytes you can get for the cheapest amount of money is around the 16 to 18 terabyte mark. And especially when you're down to $250 for 16 terabytes, that is a very good deal. So that is the best deals I found in internal NAS drives. Now for the best deal on external drives. And external drives, I've said many times, should be the very first thing you upgrade whenever you buy NAS because you need a backup. And buying an inexpensive external hard drive is by far the easiest way to get set up with a backup on a NAS. It is something I've said many times and will continue saying over and over. You need to back up your critical data and a great way to get started is with an external hard drive. And so there are two on sale here. These WD Easy stores are at 290 for a 20 terabyte drive, which is insanely cheap. If you're trying to get a really, really, really cheap NAS build, you can also buy six of these and shuck them, basically rip out the case and stick them in a NAS. I don't tend to recommend that but that's a way that people, especially back in the day when hard drive prices were going crazy, were actually getting cheap drives. But this is a 20 terabyte drive for $290. I highly recommend powering this thing up and just leaving it your, plugged into your NAS 24 seven and setting up a backup job to automatically back up anything that's changed on the NAS to this drive or any of your critical stuff that's changed on the NAS to this drive every night. It's well worth the money and you're gonna forget about it until you need it and then it may save your entire company. So with external hard drives, I tend to recommend people go with it, just a name brand and just really cheap. Expect that this is something that will fail and be okay with that. Your backup should be tested, your drive should be tested, but be okay with something cheap that is probably gonna fail because in the long run, it's probably going to save you money. 
And so I normally go between Seagate and Western Digital for these external drives, and they both are on sale here. Though the Western Digital, especially if you're looking for that larger space, is a very good deal and hard to beat in this case. This is literally what I have backing up my NAS right now. And it's just an easy way of getting started. I'll also leave a link down in the description below to how to set that up on Xenology as a backup. Really worth it, and these are actually very good deals. So then before we leave the drives, we have one more, and that is internal SSDs. And these are actually at a pretty good price. They've been coming down in price for a while, though from what I have heard, they are planning on increasing over the next few years, just as NAND chips are getting more expensive again. And so you can get a Samsung Evo two and a half inch, basically that mini SSD for 150 bucks, which is not an insane deal, but is definitely really solid. And so if you're looking for an all SSD NAS build, these things are really solid. I bought them myself many times, and this is a very good price for them. And I do expect those to come up over time. These drives are TLC, not QLC, so they will last longer and just be more stable, especially as an operating system drive and really dumping a lot of data to them. One thing I do not recommend buying is really cheap SSDs. So really cheap SSDs often do not have the proper DRAM and other really hardcore cost cutting measures that can give it good stats and very specific sequential reads and horrible stats everywhere else. So that is one thing I do really recommend buying against is an SSD, either NVMe or M.2, from a company you've just never heard of. If it's somebody you've never heard of, go in, look at their manufacturer, and really do a little bit of research. A really great resource for all this is Serve the Home, Patrick over there. He goes through and really tests all this stuff well. I would highly recommend checking it out with him because he does all this stuff very well and so many times I've been working on a client system being like why is your computer so slow and it's because their NVMe drive is completely maxed out because it does not have a DRAM chip and just running the operating system is just killing its performance so one thing not to buy on Amazon is really cheap NVMe's or SATA SSDs make sure whatever brand you're buying is recognizable because you at least know it should be decent and be okay performance wise and you're not going to get entirely horrible performance even though those really good deals can seem really cheap. So these are some good solid two terabyte SSDs that will fit in a standard Synology NAS. That is the end of our storage section. Moving on now to the networking section and this right here is a great update. It's from Ugreen and it is a $23 two and a half gigabit USB dongle. So this is the USB A version. So you got that. I use these things all the time. Literally, it is right here. I use it for video editing. Same brand, same company. It's just this one is the USB C version versus the USB A version. I've said on this channel many, many, many times, two and a half gigabit is an awesome place to be. I love these dongles. They're way cheaper, lighter, and more stable than the 10 gigabit counterparts. And in reality, they get you kind of the same performance in most people's daily workflows. And so if you're looking to upgrade your network, two and a half gigabit is a great place to start, especially now that they've gotten insanely cheap. This right here is the two and a half gigabit switch everybody's been waiting on. It is from a completely unknown brand, and I completely understand that, but it is 40 US dollars. Going back to Patrick from Serve the Home, he has investigated a lot of no name brand switches that have been showing up on Amazon. And honestly, they've all gone very well. These chips have finally gotten cheap enough where I think that no name brands are actually a great place to try, especially if it's in a home lab. Check these things out because with these prices, you can afford to buy two of them in case one of them fails. When I'm on consulting calls with clients, helping set up builds, I normally would not recommend no name brand stuff like this but I've been doing it because the prices have been so good and have not had any issues. I personally have not used this specific brand, but I've used many no-name brand switches off of Amazon and have not had any trouble. I think realistically, it's just that two and a half gigabit has finally gotten cheap enough where you can get insanely good deal. This right here is basically the price of a gigabit switch with this many ports and it's two and a half gigabit plus a 10 gig SFP plus. And so this thing spec wise is absolutely awesome and definitely worth checking out just on price alone. 
And finally, I have one more switch, and that is the cheapest 10 gigabit switch I have ever seen. An eight port 10 gigabit switch for 330 US dollars. That is unheard of. I have not seen 10 gigabit equipment get this low, especially name brand equipment pretty much ever. Any other switch I've ever seen like this that's 10 gigabit has been SFP plus 10 gigabit, so five or 10 gigabit, which is not very useful for most people. This right here is an awesome way to really up your business. And now, instead of just having two connections, you can have seven different connections to the NAS easily. This is an awesome deal, and TP-Link's a well-known company, and so it's not like you're even just getting a no-name brand switch. So this is definitely worth checking out, as I've never seen a deal this good. So going on, we've got some really good options for people who are trying to upgrade their network but don't have wired Ethernet. I'm lucky enough to have wired Ethernet in this office. I put it in myself. But if you don't have wired Ethernet, these are one option to try because Wi-Fi is just not that stable, as you very well may know. And this uses technology called Powerline, and TP-Link makes a bunch of these. You have to look in and make sure Powerline will work for your house's wiring setup, but it does work for a lot of people, especially if you are on the same electronic circuit in your house. So what this does is this actually provides Ethernet over the copper cabling that is in your wall to give you power. And so you plug this in in two different outlets in two different rooms, and it's giving you wired Ethernet. It is something that actually works and is going to be a lot more stable than Wi-Fi, and it's a great way to get your Wi-Fi access points internet, and that way they're not having a Wi-Fi backhaul. Instead, they're using this. It's not going to be full-blown gigabit speeds and as stable as that, but for people who just need internet in their office, these are a great place to at least try, and these are a good deal on them. The other option for people who actually have coax run throughout their house and they're not using it anymore are these things right here. These are Mocha adapters. So this will give you 2.5 gigabit over coax. And I've used these a ton of times, more times than the actual power line adapters. And they can work really well, especially if you're not using coax anymore and you can direct connect the lines. You can easily get a super stable connection and is definitely worth checking out because this will give you a great wired Ethernet-like experience in the most case. So if you're looking at trying to expand out your network, those are two different options to try. If you can, Mocha tends to be far, far, far better than Powerline, but Powerline can be an option for people who are really just need that wired Ethernet connection. Finally, cameras. There are a million camera deals if you're running your NAS at an NVR, and I like Real Link well enough. And I mean, these are super good deals cost wise. These are compatible with Synology surveillance station directly. And it's a easy, inexpensive PoE camera that you can get for 44 bucks. So that's another great deal. And these are one of those things that are a dime a dozen on Amazon Prime deals. If you're looking for cameras, look around and you're going to find a lot of really good deals on that. Though, if you are planning on running this on a NAS, Checking the compatibility list, because for these, these RLC520As, totally compatible with Synology Surveillance Station, but you do need to check with every single camera make and model with your specific NAS for NVR. All right, well, that's going to be pretty much it for this. Overall, I think networking and storage really pulled through with this Prime Day, and it's the first time that I've actually found things that I would actually recommend buying and maybe look into buying today. Quite frankly, I don't have a ton of needs right now, but all this stuff is stuff that I would buy given the need. If you have anything else, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.